We are live. Woohoo! All right, we made it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> okay. Welcome everyone to our creative conversation at Musea Intentional Creativity Museum. I want to apologize for the tardiness. We were having some technical difficulties, which is why we tested yesterday and of course today and nothing works. But I definitely want to give a shout out to our beloved tech diva who is in the background making sure this happens. Samaya Wisdom Yates. Could not do this without her. Thank you. I am actually on my phone. Um, so I'm glad we're here. And whew, so our creative conversation is um a part of our museum and membership programming. I am Milagro Siriano, your host. I'm also the VP of programming for Musea's Intentional Creativity Foundation. I'm a Color of Woman 2019 graduate and a Guild member for Musea. And I am here with the beautiful Virginia Masson, and she is going to be talking to us a little bit about the special day that today is, which is World Peace Day or International Day of Peace, whichever way you want to call it. We are just going to be celebrating peace and honoring peace in the world. So I want to thank you, one, for joining us, two, for your patience, and invite you at this time to grab your cuppa, hopefully it hasn't gotten cold, <laughs> your red thread and a journal, because of course we never know what our muse is going to um, be called to harvest from our conversation, okay? And I'm still breathing in. So with that, I managed to, oh, there we go. <laughs> Lose my red thread. <laughs> There's a Chinese legend that says that we are connected to each other since before the day we were born, and we have been working towards each other every day of our lives to this very moment. I believe this to be true because here we are, okay? So thank you, honoring you for your presence and being willing to allow us to plant these seeds with you. So as I extend this red thread to you, I want to invite us to already be connected and just imagine that through this thread and holding this collectively in the quantum, wherever you are, all of us that are on this thread now, and if you watch the recording of this, to feel that as we hold it, we are sending out love into the world in the name of peace, as a way of activism in this moment. So I'm inviting you, if you choose, if not for the world, call in peace for yourself, all right? Because the world needs it. And every bit of peace that we can muster up, whether for ourselves, if we're not ready to share it with the world, claim that for yourself. And we wanna honor you in that. So thank you for joining me on this thread. And ooh, so at Musea, we like to invite, we are actually exploring a monthly theme every, every month. And it is inspired and in honor of our elder and ancestor, Carmen Baraka, as she left us this legacy of we are all related. And every month we've been exploring a different topic in that context. And this month we are exploring activism and our relationship to our personal activism. And world peace is definitely something that we should all be in activism for. And what I'm going to be inviting Virginia to share with us is what activism looks like to her what it means to her and how she's using her art and her life to catalyze that in the world. After we speak, I'm going to be just giving you a little update on a couple of events that are happening with the museum. And um, so you can look forward to other ways that you can cultivate 
your voice and your purpose and your calling in life through creativity. So Virginia, how about you introduce yourself to our viewers? Just tell us a little bit about you. So thank you for joining and the mic is yours. Well, thank you, Millie. I, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm still doing the same thing Millie is, which is coming down from the adrenaline rush of a technology issue. But we made it, so um, yay. Um, that's one area where it's difficult to be peaceful, technology. Um, and my name is Virginia Mess, and I am the, um, the guild director for the Intentional Create Foundation. Um, I am a Color of Woman graduate 2018. And um, I'm also the uh, administrative director for the Cosmic Cowgirls and secretary of the board for ICF. So I just like to get my fingers in a little bit of everything. Um, but it is because of deep love for this work that we are doing. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here talking about International Day of Peace and sharing um, just my ideas. And I think we all have unique ideas about how to um, bring more peace to the world. And um, of, of anyone, I would think that this group understands the hard work that that is. Mm, mm, that's so true. Definitely, it is hard work. But together, we can make a difference one at a time, as long as our love is at the center of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, we are making waves. <laughs> we are definitely making waves. Yeah. So Virginia, I wanna ask you regarding your relationship with activism um, and how you show up in the world, what does that look like for you? Hmm. So my, my deepest desire is to be, I, we were talking about this earlier, to be a lioness on the front lines with pickets and getting arrested <laughs> and getting thrown in jail. And, you know, all of those things that I just see these incredible women doing, but um, as a, as a peace builder and, and, and I have taken all the personality tests. I am a peace builder across the, across the board. Um, I'm, that is not my modus operandi. Um, I, I'm a behind the scenes person. And, and I think that it took me a long time to accept that. I felt um, pretty guilty for not having a desire to do, to really be in the face of the distress. And I felt um, bad for, for, I felt like I was letting people down especially for justice issues. So um, when I found intentional creativity, I found my activism, um, which is, which is a, a backdoor activism. It sounds terrible, but the truth is, I believe, my, my uh, heart of heart believes that we'll never have world peace until we have personal peace, mm. until individuals mm -hmm. know how to find peace. Because, within themselves. Yep, within themselves and, and to live from that place instead of from fear. Mm. So so my activism is about holding space and and um and asking the right questions to help people find their own path to peace. Because everyone that I can help along that route um changes the world. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, honoring you and, and holding that and carrying that thread, more of us, you know, um, yeah, it takes each person. It takes each person. So I definitely honor you for that and witness you in that. And I know that, you know, you said it was just like, you know, the little things, just like us having this conversation. Yep. It's actually an act of activism, just bringing the awareness to it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really impactful, powerful, and needed. Um, what is peace? You know, like, what is peace and how, you know, how has it changed over the years for you, the definition of peace? Oh, there's, there's two things that have just changed profoundly as I grow up. One is love, the meaning of love to me as a child to, and two as an elder, and the other is peace. And and 
you know, I, I first heard the words peace. My, my father was an Episcopal priest. So I was, you know, in church all the time. My, you know, mom would give me a sketch pad and I'd be sketching away and he'd be up giving a sermon. And, um, but the word that always popped out at me was, was peace. And it could have been in the form of, you know, the peace of the Lord be, be with you, or it could be in a song or a prayer, but it seemed to be a trigger word for me or a word that was of great importance. Um, and as I grew, as I got older, I moved away from the church because I didn't see a correlation there. Mm -hmm. um, but I never left peace. And I started to look at um, what that meant. And for the longest time, it meant no fighting. Um, I came from a relatively peaceful home. Well, an unexpressed home, we'll put it that way. But um, I didn't like any kind of confrontation. So peace to me was, it's all calm. And that's my personality type. And also, I think a little bit of nurture in there. And then as I continued to grow and I really got a little more mature and a little less idealistic and saw the injustice in the world and the violence in the world um, being being brought upon both mental and physical violence brought upon people who are to, you know wholly innocent or undeserving and nobody deserves that. Um, I realized that peace meant justice. It meant that we are all um, able to walk in the world and feel the same safety that I feel walking in the world, um, that our children, we can raise them and only worry about feeding and clothing them and knowing they can go out into the world and have the same rights that I have. And, and I, you know, that's when peace became justice to me. Um, and I also saw that the injustices I saw were brought on by fear. But, you know, the people, the people who are just fearful of something that they don't know or understand mm -hmm. or is different than them. So what's a better way to get to that than to make a safe space for even a fearful person to come in and ask themselves those questions mm. um, and not be judged or not be um, shamed that they can come in, ask the questions and ask and ask and ask until they have their answer and opening that door for them in a safe way. Um, even if I don't necessarily um, agree with the things that they've been raised with, I can still do that in a loving way in, in the, in the hope that if they ask the questions, they will see their heart, their heart will open. Okay. So that's, that's kind of um, now my relationship with peace is it's, it's about allowing someone else to find theirs. It's not about me shoving it down their throat. Um, it is about me insisting that all people are tr treated well and actually animals and Mm -hmm. the no, yeah, also that, that, that we allow them to find their way in a way that um, allows them to remain whole and human. And this resonates with me so much because I know in our in our preparation, we talked about that and the word that came up was conviction and how my journey, you know, I've never considered myself an activist or participated in anything, um, you know, in in the call of activism and it wasn't until my experience with, you know, George Floyd and all of that, that that's when that was the first time I actually had a soul wrenching desire to move. And that's when I understood the word activism is to act, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd never had that before. I was going to bring my painting up, but in getting all of the <laughs> tech, I didn't get a chance to set it up. But it resonated with me because, you know, I felt that in my learning about activism and finding my voice and speaking in solidarity with, you know, the situation in the community, um, I found myself in situations where my convictions were challenged because I didn't share the same, my actions weren't the same, like the picketing and the, you know, the fist up and, um, and it made me feel awkward. So when I learned through you that, you know, that resume, I'm not a confrontational person either. And anytime there's conflict and com confrontation, I just break, I just 
collapse within myself. So I love what you're sharing about not having to get in someone's face and not actually having to, um, you know, to, to, to do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. You know, your activism is personal to you. So I can, I can actually stand up for the same cause as you do, but I can do it in my way. And when you said that, that sort of like made, it felt good in my body. And I know that we're talking about activism in the sense of like social justice. And I know one of the sites that you shared with me, that's their theme, just like we have a theme of activism. Their theme is actually social justice in regards to world peace. Um, and I just wanna bring to light that activism, we can be an activist, an activist towards so many things, you know, social justice is one, peace is another. Um, we recently here at Musea did an exhibit for, um, uh, with Tree Sisters, you know, and activism for the trees and the land, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's so many different ways that we can be and, and you know, choose to act and, 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 and do something on behalf of something, you know, whether it's the land, the animals, whatever is in your heart that matters to you, that's really great. But, you know, getting back to as far as peace, when we think about peace, we always think about conflict. So, you know, with it being World Peace Day, then yes, in this context, we definitely want to um, hold that, you know, but they resonated about conviction, you know, and the conviction mm -hmm. is basically like what's propelling you to take this action for yeah. this cause that means so much for you you know, right. or this person. So I love that. Um, let's see. It must have been really interesting growing up with a dad as a priest. <laughs> he was a very open hearted man. So it, it was, we had some great conversations. Mm -hmm. And that was the foundation and it's like really resonated with you. Yeah. Now I see that you have your legend behind you from yeah. Clan Kira, right? Yeah. What's her name? Her name is Blossoming Heart. Okay. <laughs> and how has she impacted, informed, or shifted your relationship with activism? Um it's actually super timely for me because it's, it is, I feel very naked saying the things I'm saying to the public. Number one, I know that, um, that I, righteous anger is righteous anger. And I am not dis, discounting that at all. It's just not something I carry. Um, so when I painted her, what she kept coming up as, as, and I don't know if you can see her face, but she, she doesn't take any crap from anyone or, and, and, or injustice from anyone, but she, she is a sanctuary for those whose hearts are opening. And, and I think um, she made me feel like that's okay. And that's a, that's a, an important thing too. And, you know, maybe one day I'll be a courageous lioness. I don't know. I change, you know, every year I change. So maybe when I'm 80, I'll be out there. But for now, this is the work that I see the greatest movement um, from. So she represents this um, honest sanctuary for exploration of truth. Mm. I love the way our paintings actually, especially with legend, and that's what the core foundation of legend is, is to be that person, you know, be that legend that does what we as normal humans would probably not do and step into that greatness and that 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 big love that we want to bring into the world and carry it in a way that serves serves us and everyone around us. Yeah. So she's like your inner activist, right? She gives you a voice where you know. And that's the energy that I sort of felt like when I I saw her. I'm and when I prepare for 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 these conversations, of course I'm researching and I'm connecting and I I'm you know, I'm in the background 
um, witnessing and connecting with our community. And I just, all of the paintings are so gorgeous. All of the stories are so heartfelt, you know, so it's always hard to choose one. And when I saw yours, there was just some energy about her. And when I asked you about her and you told me what her message was, I just knew that this was the one. And then the fact that we had the schedule for today, which was World Peace Day, and you're known as the Peace Muse. Mm -hmm. It just seemed perfect <laughs> for us to get you on <laughs> this creative conversation. Um, why the Peace Muse? Um, wow. Well, it's it's been my name for a long time. I think I told you this story. I mm -hmm. I was the Peace Muse. Before I opened my my museum location here in Detroit, outside Detroit, and um, the the Christmas that my the last Christmas I had with my husband before he passed, he he purchased he created for me my art tent um, and my tabletop and everything with the logo and the Peace Muse on it, and um, you know after he passed, of course things get set aside and you just trying to get through it. Mm -hmm. So when I started my museum, I went, well, I'm going to, I, you know, I'm just coming out of corporate. I'm going to give it a name that will be instantly recognizable. And I named it Great Lakes Center for Intentional Creativity. Try to get that on a checkbook. <laughs> you can't do it. right? But I was, I, I think I was, it was my attempt to link and to also be regional and all of those things. So I did that for two years and I could never talk about it. Like I couldn't, I never had no elevator speech. It never, cause by the time you say the whole name, the elevator rides over. <laughs> so one day I was sitting with my daughter and I said, I think I should go back to peace muse. That's me. That's feels like me. And she's like, well, I've, you know, I've been waiting two years for you to do that. So that that's how we came back to Peace Muse. But the name came from my work with um, the National um, um, Peace Education Association. There's there's you know, it's just through the work I've done on learning how to build peace and hold peace and uh, share peace. Um, it just seemed like the perfect name. So that's how I ended up with it. Wow. That's so beautiful. That story of your husband and, and, you know, just having it and carrying that, that connection is eternal. Yeah. You yeah, know, my, my heart just like expanded when you told me that the first time and I get it, you know, like when I started my journey, you know, before all of, you know, before even being, um, connected with intentional creativity, just my creative journey. I had this dream of starting a business and the name that I came up with was Millie Made Creations. And I had that for so many years, even before I was even actually physically making any, you know, like really promoting myself. And then one year for my birthday, I bought myself my own website and I got business cards, you know, and started that. But it was since then and going through my journey with intentional creativity, color of woman and everything that's been happening. Um, one of the things that Shiloh teaches is the concept of being healed enough, you know, knowing that in any moment you can choose to be the best you that you are, you know, and not worry about healing all of the stories and all of the traumas and fixing all of the things that are not right um, or not being where you perceive yourself to be at any point of your life and just choosing that right now you're healed enough. And that rang with me so much because my story and journey has been about just my personal healing and through that um, inspiring and catalyzing other women beings, you know, who feel called to make a shift in their life through creativity. And it was almost a year ago that I decided I looked online and I found that the URL healed enough arts was actually available. So I bought it so that I can truly carry that energy like you carry the peace muse. And it's in a way is helping you step into and, and be that. So that resonates with the name and how like everything else you were doing didn't even compute. And it wasn't until you claimed it and became it and lived into it that everything started opening up for you. 
Yeah, I went, I went full on woo woo. <laughs> and, and I, you know, <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, that's a scary thing to do when you've been in corporate your whole life is, you know, and, and they already think you're nuts. So, <laughs> um, and it was such a relief to just be that finally. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I encourage people to, you know, as they're doing their painting to, to, step into who you are and I'm still stepping in. I mean, I step all over myself. It's, you know, it's a great <laughs> process, <laughs> but I'm working on it. So I love it. And that's all you can do. You know, every day we learn, we grow more opportunities happen. And just when you learn to feel comfortable with that, just being, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, and honoring what your heart is asking of you. Yeah. The rest is eh, whatever. <laughs> and you're in good company. So it's so much easier to do this work when you know that you're not alone. And yeah. that's why community is so important because we all have a stitch that needs to be added to this tapestry of life. You yeah. Know? And so. we need we need elders and we need young people and we need to hear these things because you know, you and I were talking and the, the, the idea that I, for years and years thought I was, I was depressed because I could not create world peace by myself. And I finally had a friend say, what is in this for you? Why are you, you know, why do you think you have to feed all the starving children in the world to be worthy? And not to say that that isn't a burden or something that I carry that there's that suffering. But if I can't fix me, how am I going to even, you know, ripple out to anything? So it's like a pebble and, and there's nothing, there's nothing too small. There's nothing no step too small. Too small. Yeah. No, nope. no, nope. not at all. And it reminds me when you said that I was, I can hear Michael Jackson singing in the background. <laughs> You know, we have to start with the woman in the mirror, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's the only way we can make change. Yeah. So definitely, definitely resonates with me. Um, saying that how, you know, nothing is too small. How can, how can viewers, our viewers um, start in a small way to take action, to engage with the activism, you know, in activism for peace? So one of the things that I read when I was in my early 30s, I think it was an Anais Nin book, I'm not sure, but I read that you have an opportunity with every interaction with a human being to change their life forever. And, you know, that seemed like an awfully big thing, but then it went on to say, when you're passing someone on the sidewalk or in the grocery store, um, if you look at them and smile, you change their life. It might be their mood. It might be, you don't know, they might have been contemplating suicide and, and your kindness shifted them enough. You, we don't know. Um, if you, if you ignore them or look away, you're also changing their life. So all of those, and it, it, I'm not trying to make life overwhelming, but there's just opportunity everywhere. And it can be the tiniest thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be a, a kindness to the checkout lady who's terribly grumpy today. Um, that, you know, when, when the last thing we want to do is be kind because she has been unkind, be kind because it's, it's easy to do. It's so mm -hmm. easy. So I would say, just watch your interactions with people and with yourself. Yes, yes, Which yes. I'm terrible at, <laughs> so. And every day we get to try our best, Yeah. right? Every day we get to try our best. I'm thinking about the four agreements and that's just it, you know, it's like every day. Yeah. Try your best, as long as you try your best, it's all good, it's all good. And I know that you have some other resources and links that you want to share with us. Um, I did give them to our team members, so um, they should be in the comments. Um, and if not, we will definitely make sure you have those so that you can find a way and feel into which way or if anything is calling to you. And you don't have to do anything today, but just we want to plant that seed that, you know, 
if something catches your attention, feeling into your heart, if you feel moved to, to a cause, any cause. Um, uh, but today we're definitely peace every day. So not just today, but every day, we should always try to create some form of peace for ourselves. And in that we are changing the world because once we're at peace, we'll look at the world differently. Yeah. Right. And we treat the world differently. And we treat the world differently, definitely. So thank you for those contributions, um, uh, Virginia. And uh, again, I, I'm used to being on my computer when I can actually see the posts going in and add them on the screen. So I trust that they are being added and we will follow through with those. And that will include your website, which if you like, you can let us know what your website is. Oh, peacemusestudio.com or peacemuseart.com, either one. Okay, cool. Cool. And what is the message that you wish to leave our viewers with today? Um, I think I, I go back, to, you know, number one is begin within. Mm -hmm. so that's my little, that's my little bumper sticker that reminds me that I have to do my own work. But the other thing is there's just nothing too small. There's nothing that is too small to be considered activism. Mm -hmm. There's no kindness, no signature, nothing that doesn't count. So do what you feel moved to do and, um, and be kind to yourself. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you for that. And before I, um, bring our, our little conversation to a close. I want to invite back up Samea. If you can join us, please. She's gonna kill you. <laughs> no. I just I just want to I, I just wanted to, you know, and I and I'm I'm learning to open myself up to the universe. And when these things happen, they're for a reason. The fact that we had tech issues and I had to ask for Samaya's support, which she's, oh, love, loves to give because that's who she is. And because of the topic that we are celebrating today and talking about and, you know, and, and, and exploring and weaving, I want to honor you, um, Samaya, because I know that you have been an activist for so many reasons and so many causes, and you were recently featured in our um, magazine you know, again, about this topic of activism. So I just wanted to definitely honor you for that and all that you do for the women in the world, you know, um, regarding our safety, our expression, our bodies, um, domestic violence, partner violence, you know, just the plights of a woman <laughs> in general sometimes, you know, but um, the fact that you are here and part of this circle, I wanted to bring presence and honor you for, for what you do and give you an opportunity to share something that you'd like to share with our viewers um, as well uh, regarding activism. Um, thank you. But yes, like Virginia said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my tech gear, not <laughs> on, on screen, but... Um, I guess what I have to say about activism is just do it. Um, like Virginia was saying, even the smallest act can have a great impact and you never know. Mm -hmm. You never know um, what a smile has done for someone. The art that I made that was featured in the last uh, newsletter. The, or the newsletter yeah. Um, with my art on the Roe versus Wade overturn. You never know what just creating that piece of art and displaying it or selling it, having it, having someone hang it in their home or their office, what, how that empowers that person, how that uplifts that person, how, how it may, may make that person jump into action and do something. You mm -hmm. don't, it doesn't always have to be the marches and the, the signs hung up everywhere or, you know, bumper stickers, whatever form of activism that you feel called to do is needed, necessary, and just do it. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's so true. And, and it's one of, you know, and that's what 
for us, the core of intentional creativity is about, you know, you know, we're museum, 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 intentional creativity museum. And what we are planting and sharing and cultivating and inspiring is also art as activism. And that's basically our language and how we express ourselves in our community and what we want to grow outside of our community individually. Um, and it's just so important that art, you know, art as activism gives you a voice when you like myself and, and, and Virginia, we're not confrontational. So that gives us that voice. So definitely it's a great tool and, and it can be anything, but you know, it doesn't have to be art, but we wanna definitely bring presence to the fact that art is a powerful tool for activism because once you're putting your intention and your desire um, into that fabric, it's resonating. It, it is just energy coming into form and whatever it is you create carries that. So like Samaya said, you know, her piece, it's gonna carry that energy. And if someone purchases it or not, it's gonna be there, you know? And Virginia's piece behind her, it, speak, it spoke to me because she was able to transfer that energy and I didn't know what it meant, but I felt it. And that, you know, brought me to invite her and, and start asking the question, like, what is her story? So, and you know, my painting, Anytime I feel perplexed or just don't know what to do, I feel so comfortable with bringing myself to the canvas as an altar. Mm -hmm. And I trust that anything I put into it, whether I'm doing clay, so like I have this piece here that I'm creating and I'm working on, and let's see if I can get you, there you go. You know, it's and awesome. it's telling a story. Thank you so, so much. And it's telling the story of the co-created self. And, you know, what that means and how we can use creativity to integrate all of these different facets of who we are and how we become. And we can become the person we want to be as long as we understand and, and explore and ask the questions. So anything you, you, you do is an act of activism because you're acting is just adding the cause and the intention. Can I yes, can I add something? Thing. Yes. So and, and because I I'm agreeing with everything you have both said, the, and the other thing that these pieces of art do are in, inspire us to or the, the viewer to ask questions within themselves too. So if I do a piece on my ancestral um, entanglements with injustice because as a European woman, um, there are, they are there. If I'm asking myself that question and putting it on the canvas and um, whether it's clear in the, in the actual painting to someone, I think it still says, take a look. And I always put a story with my painting, but it's like, it's okay to take a look at this. It's all right to, to learn from it and figure out how you want to be moving forward. How, where do you want to steer your family moving forward into the, into the future for, for the America, obviously, and, and uh, the relationships that we have. So I don't think we should ever underestimate that power of a piece of art. You know, we, that piece that you just held up, holy smokes, I want to hold that in my hands and oh. really, experience it because I know mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna move me and I think I think as artists we need to remember that people cannot walk by a piece a piece of work without wondering about it and it gives you such an opportunity to open a heart up and and, and stick in some questions for them to ask themselves yes yes definitely definitely yeah creativity does catalyze a lot Mm -hmm. catalyzes a lot and you can ask the questions without expecting an answer yep the answers will reveal themselves in their time you know in yep. their time but yeah and we can go on because <laughs> this is really deep stuff like I tell you and I I just so enjoyed having you Virginia I just want to thank you so much for the wisdom that you've brought and the abundance of of resources that you've given us um, so that we can have the opportunity to further explore 
and, and step into activism in whatever way we choose. Well, thank you for having me and happy International Day of Peace. Mm -hmm. Check out the National um, Peace Academy. It's an awesome group of people um, that's US-based. And, um, and I wish you all uh, personal peace and world peace as well. Thank you. Oh, so while we breathe in everything we just heard from Virginia as well as from Samaya um, and myself, I want to just um, remind you of a couple of events that the museum is having. One of them is our yearly retreat, our annual retreat, Vivid, and um, is Vivid Dancing Each Other Home. So it is our online painting retreat. So we're inviting anyone who wants to join to join us. And it's just gonna be a journey um, to dance, paint and sing in ceremony with uh, our Intentional Creativity community, um, guided by curator Shiloh Sophia, the Cosmic Cowgirls and the Guild, which Virginia and I will be supporting that. We'll be in Sonoma um, at Musea supporting you. And uh, we also have um, and actually, Vivid is going to be on um, Friday to Sunday, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. Okay. Um, and you can join at the comfort of your own home, invite other people to join you so that you can have a little, you know, circle of people with you and, and, and participate in it. And it'll be live stream broadcasted, um, you know, from Musea. Then we have, if you, oh, and if you want to, learn more about it. If you don't see the link already, it is musea.org forward slash vivid dash 2022. Okay. And we also have our monthly pop open studio, which is a member benefit. And that's on September 30th, the last Friday of the month from two o'clock to three o'clock to five o'clock Pacific time. And it is just uh, an opportunity for our members to come and join and be in community and paint because we know that creating in community activates so much. We have a lot of projects going on sometimes and we just want to be able to cut out a little time to focus and really devote to our creative practices. So we will be dancing. Um, Samea will be our DJ and giving us, helping us to bring in that somatic movement that is just so important to the creative process. And we'll have other members there, you know, and just witnessing if you need any type of advice, um, you know, or witnessing about your 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 process, you want to share any type of insights. It's just really a great time for us to be together. So I hope to see you there for those who are members and those who are not members. We will be giving you information on how to become a member as well. And in October. I'm sharing this now because we shifted our museum um, programming. So we're not doing shows every month. So in the in-between months when we're not doing shows, we're probably gonna do quarterly shows. You'll have conversations such as this and other um, interviews and, and, and pop-ups. So in October at uh, 12 o'clock PM Pacific time, we are going to be hosting a special live artist interview with award-winning Ukrainian artist Olga Kovtun. So I look forward to that and I hope that you will join us and you'll hear more about it. We'll be you know, sharing that information, but just if you wanna save the date now, October 19th, we will be um, having that live interview um, as part of the museum's programming. And the creative conversations are just one of the many benefits that you would get as a member if you're interested in becoming a member, then you can just go to musea.org forward slash memberships and explore the different levels of membership that we have. And it also includes um, an invitation to join our Sacred Echoes of the Well, a circle for women of color to our members who identify, self-identify as Black, Indigenous, or women of color. And that is what we have you know we we just please come 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 <laughs> so, i just love having having these conversations um they just light me up and i'm glad that we decided to stick it through virginia and just 
you know, and I don't know, we also have tomorrow's this, the, 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 the equinox, right? So maybe, you know, there's something going on there, but tomorrow's the equinox. Um, so I want to wish you all a happy um, equinox. We here in the, the Northern hemisphere is celebrating, <laughs> right? The fall and the Southern is, will be going into their spring, right? Um, and it's also my birthday tomorrow. So what? I will, I will be, yes, I will be bringing you all into my ceremony. I plan on having myself a nice little equinox ceremony. It'll be my first. So um, let's see what tomorrow brings, but. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So everyone, thank you again for joining us. I hope that you really enjoyed everything that was shared here with you. Thank you, Samaya. Thank and, you, Samaya. Um, <laughs> we will see you around. Thanks for joining our creative conversation. And may love be at the center of all your choices. Bye. Peace.